Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. And we are so excited to have Amanda Flaherty joining us here today, live and in person on our Zoom, and as well as on the podcast once again. Welcome back. Would you mind saying hello and introducing yourself? Hi, everybody. Yes, my name is Amanda, and I am the owner of Odyssey Through the Sea. I do holistic healing when it comes to spiritual, mental, emotional, um, and physical balancing. So that is a little bit about me. Great. Tell us the name of uh, your website, how we can get in touch with you. Oh, yes. So um, odysseythroughthesea.com, as well as you can text me for any availability or questions about appointments at 954 954- Three two six seven five two three, And we do energy healing, uh, oracle card readings. Tell us a little bit about your services. Yes. So I do actually a bit of, um, I do oracle card readings and don't mind the sound. That's my cat in the background. That's okay. <laughs> she I found have something. one too. <laughs> um, but I do energy healing when it comes to Reiki. I use Hodoponopono, which is an ancient Hawaiian healing practice. Wow. And um, yeah, it's, that's a really fun one. Um, and Akashic record reading, I do Oracle card reading, and I actually am going to be adding another service, which is going to be, um, going through people's astrological charts and giving them the 411 on what elements, fire, air, water, earth, um, are predominant in their chart and how that affects the way that they show up. So that's going to be a new service I add on as well. Fantastic. Well, so exciting to have you here. I know today we're going to talk a little about, um, to start with what your clients learn and really take away from working with you. You say it's an emotional, uh, it's intelligence and responsibility. Could we talk about that? Yeah, absolutely. So um, part of what I go over with my clients is that um, this world or even just what interactions that you have is like a mirror. And so when we are having um, moments where our emotions are provoked, it's um, opportunity for us to explore versus to react on them. And so um, because there is a, you know, there is a term called blind with rage, right? So when our emotions take over, we tend to act in ways that maybe we wouldn't do it if we were in a more rational standpoint. Mm -hmm. So when we're working with emotions, it's learning how to pause and really even, you know, learn to make space to be like, okay, well, there's something, you know, going on with me. I got to take some time to, you know, unpack or even digest. And um, that's not really something that we find too often in today um, space for. So that's a big thing that I like giving responsibility back to my clients and helping them claim it, right? Okay. I actually need more space. I need some time um, to process and digest this. Yeah, absolutely. And let me ask you this. So how, okay. Um, when you're working with a client, right, you're doing what we're doing right now here on zoom, right? Cause mm-hmm. clearly that's, it's a virtual world, right? How do you get to know, you know, someone comes to you and they discuss what's, you know, how do you de- determine what they need? They do do a little intake in a sense. And then from there, Yes. So actually, um, what I like to do is, and it also helps them to, to, you know, know that I'm, I'm coming from an unbiased standpoint. So I will, um, connect with their energy field. So like if I'm on a zoom call, energy knows no time or space. So it doesn't matter that you may be across the country or, um, maybe even 10 miles or just even sitting in front of me, I can connect to your energetic field based off of having your information of like your name, as well as even just being here with you. I, it's almost like a remote viewing that happens. And I will take a scan of their body and look into even their chakras and what they've got going on. Um, because their orc energy talks and it's, um, and it's very interpretive. I, I talk with it through colors, through emotion. Um, and cause that's really what emotions even are. It's just energy in motion. So I'll connect with their body and before they even say anything, because I don't, because that's also kind of the fun part of like getting a reading is, you know, that they know things that you like no one else would have known. Right. Yeah. Um, so me picking up on their field and, and even just conveying as well as seeing either images that pop up that their guides show me of where their focus needs to be at, because any person who comes to get a reading has an intention that they want some clarity on something or they want um, to work through 
a, um, a, a problem or just wanting to understand where they stand, what's the true for them. So a lot of the times I will, um, that's already in their energetic field. Yeah. And so they're like, okay, that's exactly what I even came here for. I was like, perfect. So you didn't even have to say anything. You know? Yes. <laughs> that is awesome. 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 All right. So let's talk about the nature of humans. You say is compassion, hurting people and hurt people. Can we go over that? Yeah, absolutely. So I always tell, um, and it's, it's a concept that, um, even sometimes triggers some of my clients because of maybe how they, um, feel how the wound that they may have still be raw and yeah. understandably so, but hurt people do hurt people. And, um, once we start to recognize that by nature, people don't want to do something out of malition is a very rare. And usually, and if it is out of malition, it's because there's something chemically imbalanced or there is a, um, a severe trauma that that person even went through to even make it seem that that was okay, or that was acceptable. So when we start to give space to recognize that, um, there's wisdom in what we've been through or what we've gone through and even the darkest of times. And because I've worked with some people who have been through some of the worst things that, you know, you could possibly even comprehend, but what's so beautiful is when they're able to find, um, the release of that wound and recognize, okay, I can still trust in the unknown. Yeah. I can still allow myself to, um, believe in that there is good hearted people and good nature around me. And I'm possible to experience that. So once we start to even recognize that, um, and it's, and it's, it's a gel delicate balance, you know, we don't want to, especially if someone is still raw from a trauma or an experience, it's more about making space to honor that emotion and those experiences because, and that's actually the scary part, what people don't like to do. They, they you know, they're like, if I start feeling these emotions, I feel like I'm going to get stuck in there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, it, and it's like, not at all. Actually the body stores emotion. And the more that we <laughs> judge the emotion. Okay. It, you go, you okay. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. I mean, I'm happens. popping. Got my tea, but <clears throat> I'll take more. <laughs> yeah. That happens to me all the time. Um, so the, um, component is that once you start actually releasing judgment or fear from the ex emotional experience that wants to have a moment with you, then you start to actually release it. And once you start even releasing it, it's like you're validating it and it has no space for you to like sit with you anymore. Yeah. Yeah. So from there is when we can start to recognize, okay, what wisdom does this have for me? What does it, what do we take away from it? Because it's amazing when people are even able to come to realize the ways that they've responded to um, life after whatever has happened to them and how actually there's a lot of information there um, to, oh, sorry, I'm getting a call. Let me just That's okay. That. It happens. It happens. <laughs> so um, part of, um, and in, in totality, we have an ability to um, really move through things if we decide to. But if we, if we believe that that emotion or that experience is going to dictate and determine everything that we experience thereafter, then that would, that's what your reality will be. Okay. And so that's where I kind of help people of moving to a new um, possibilities. Yeah. All right. This is good. Now, understanding the relationship with the heart and the mind could be a difficult thing. Uh, could you talk a little about the how the brain is designed to help us and how the heart differs? <laughs> yes. So, um, you know, there's, and, and I always kind of bring things back to the chakras, which is that, you know, you've got these, um, you know, in a uh, basic level, you've got your crown, you've got your third eye, you've got your throat, and then you've got your heart. And so the bottom layer is you've got your solar plexus, which is associated with the ego. You've got your sacral, which is connected to the emotion okay. and then your root, which is connected to, you know, um, the physical world. And so what's in, so I always look at it as actually the three lower chakras are connected to more so the mind and the, um, 
uh, three higher chakras are connected more towards the heart. And the heart is actually the center where both of these, you know, energies meet. And it's actually why it's called the heart center. So when we're connecting with our center, we're taking information from both our mental experience as well as from our emotional experience. And so when we have these two links together, because we all know when we follow our hearts with out any you know basis of logic sometimes it works out for us don't get me wrong yeah but there's other times where you're like Wee! and then you just find out that you didn't have a parachute and then you find yourself you know getting some wounds yeah but <laughs> then you've also got you know the logic end where you make things so black and white where you release the subjectivity of what you even came or like what even life is all about right love connection um, hope, peace, all these things that we aim to experience, we can't have those if we're solely based in logic. Yeah. So this is where um, with the brain, it's designed to, it doesn't give a, doesn't care if, if what is, um, what you're doing supports you emotionally. It more so has this um, care that you survived, that you're getting from oh. point A to point B. Wow. Got it. Okay. Interesting. Um, yeah, that's kind of, yeah, I didn't realize that. Yeah. Mm. So, and, cause there's, go oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> there's this moment where we can have this awareness of our conscious mind, which is more so connected with our heart, um, being aware of the pattern of comfort that our mind likes to be in. Right. So let's say you want to try to get up early and work out that alarm goes off and you're like, "Mm, but bed's so comfy and this feels so good. You know what? I'm actually really tired. I'm going to actually go back to bed. And so, but then your conscious mind's like, ah, but you know, I want to feel better and I want to make that a priority and you know, so on and so forth. And so it's like recognizing that the brain, can we communicate more on that subconscious level of recognizing, well, what does these patterns and habits actually bring me what safety is it getting from it yeah and then when you're able to bridge that gap of recognizing what safety it's bringing you you're able to open up more of that compassion for yourself of recognizing okay so how can I talk to myself without this rigid judgment of like punishment how can I actually open up of like okay this is what we're um getting towards, right? This is actually what's really going to help you in a long run. Yeah, it's uncomfortable at first, but you've got this. Like, let's, let's try it. Let's give it a shot. Interesting. All right. Good to know. Thank you for sharing that. Also, I know you want to kind of dive into a little more about um, confidence, right? And Mm -hmm. um, now talk about that because feeling confident, you say, and what you believe in from a place of acceptance versus defensiveness. Yes, that's always um, a big one. Um, what I found with working with people as well as even with myself, because everything I teach my clients is definitely stuff that I've applied even to myself. Um, and it's all about um, when someone is challenging you or um, people tend to, uh, coming back to actually everybody's mirrors. Yeah. So when you're a mirror, Um, and let's say you're, you're choosing, yes, this is my truth. Now I, um, believe in hope and I want to, um, and I find value in working out and because I want to achieve this, let's say, um, level of health. Mm -hmm. And so let's say you're telling this to a friend and they're bringing up past versions of yourself of like, oh, but you procrastinate all the time or, you know, and they start even, maybe bring up old identities of yourself. And then yeah. you're kind of like, oh, like ah. you get that defensiveness. Like who, who are you? I'm actually, but I'm serious this time and I'm going to do it. And it's, it's what's recognizing is that one people project their own fear yeah. of, of what it is that they're even scared of. And when they see somebody else who's not using excuses or actually taking those steps to break a pattern, um, they revert back to what it is that they know. And sometimes it's very unconscious. They don't mean to do this from a malicious standpoint. So when we recognize like, okay, it's not personal. Um, it's this person either has an old 
version of me that I actually was accepting and I felt was a joke too, right? That I would, you know, get in on. Um, or maybe it's that this person is also self-conscious with what I'm finding empowerment with now. And instead of getting having that reaction, can we communicate our vulnerability yeah. in that moment? And um, of saying is like, hey, you know, I uh, actually that doesn't resonate anymore. And when we recognize too of what it's triggering, yeah, is is even our own fear of lack of belief that we have in ourselves to accomplish this or to even stand in that new version of ourselves that we want. And that's where I see that there's um, uh, where those reactions come from when really we can take it as an opportunity versus as a moment to try to explain ourselves. And don't get me wrong, we get those moments where we're like, but, 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 you know, it's like, well, that's not me anymore, you know, and we try to um, uh, uh, rebuttal. But it's even recognizing of like, wait, I don't have to explain myself right now. Yeah. Yeah. You have the right to be who you are. But there's a lot of judgmental people out there. And what do you do about that draining type of negative energy? Because. So I actually turn the mirror back on that. And I say, okay, you know, because I have clients who will come to me and I will be giving them certain things. Like I've done that. I've done that or I've done this. And and they're already like saying everything that every connection I say, okay, let's even stop right there because you've anytime we've tried something once and you've already created a, an assumption that you know, all of it, can you, instead of ex, ex, accept an experience and its discomfort and really understand why it's bringing you discomfort Yeah. or what, what is it about that you don't like? Cause I'll ask them. I said, okay, well, you know, what was your feedback? So what is that you want to, to, where do you find that you're going to think? And if they're just kind of in that, I don't know. Then I say, okay, then that's where you've got to sit with yourself yeah. and recognize, are you avoiding? Cause also energetically, I can pick up if it's an avoidance that they're with, or it's a, um, they want instant gratification or results. Cause that's also a thing. Like, I mean, we're so used to, we order Amazon and you get it here in two days, right? Or not I even. Know. I know. So we're used to getting things in an instant way, whereas emotional regulation and, um, you know, understanding your values and realigning your, your beliefs of what you trust. It's not going to happen overnight. You're going to have instances that are going to yeah. challenge it. And so Anywhere you go, challenge is going to happen. So which challenges are you willing to actually meet and not have this expectation or attachment to an expectation of how it's supposed to look and how fast it's supposed to get done? So I'll even, you know, um, I won't, can, I won't be even going back and forth with them. I'll just cut it. I'll be like, okay. Okay. So what's what's going on here? You know, like, can you be aware of like, I've given you uh, like these other options and you've given any excuse. So is it a me thing or is it a you thing? And I'll even ask them, I'll even start to ask them questions because a lot of times we already have these scripts of like when advice is given all the, you know, the rebuttals that we're going to have with it. So instead of even let, you know, giving opportunity for defensiveness or, even um, uh, assumptions that they may have already had. Yeah. I'll ask them questions to under to get them to better understand their response or their answer. Mm-hmm. And let me ask you this: uh, just a reminder, uh, if you're just tuning in, it's Odyssey Through the Sea dot com. We got to remind people who are just tuning in. Yeah. As she says, in waves of change, challenge, and fear, we find our true direction. Because it is no coincidence you're here tuning in today. It's no coincidence we're here live on Zoom. It's no coincidence, and um, everything I feel is happening, you know, for a reason. So, is there, you know, do you want to discuss more about your practice, um, about all that you do, because all the services you offer? I mean, you got the mermaid in the sea. Could you tell us about that? Absolutely. Um, so actually what's funny is when I was a kid, um, my, I grew up in a very Irish family and, um, my grandmother, she used to tell us, uh, the story of how, cause I have very, I have olive toned skin. And so she used to tell us this mermaid legend of how dark Irish came about. And, um, cause usually people from Ireland have very fair skin. 
And so we had dark hair, you know, um, more of an olive tone complexion. And she said it's because that we came from, you know, the part of Ireland where mermaids and the people in Ireland fell in love with mermaids and they had children with them. And eventually they, you know, people got scared of the mermaids and ran them out of town and decided to, um, uh, you know, her kid, their kids were left though on the island. So it says legend has it off of certain coasts of Ireland that you can see, you know, um, spot mermaids and because they like to see their children play. Aww. So yeah, it was really sweet. And um, ever since then, I was like, I'm a mermaid. I, every, anything I did was always, um, I always would pretend that my feet were glued together. And um, I also just had this deep fascination with nonverbal communication and emotions and, it was just always a passion of mine. And um, my journey had led from being a, a coach, as well as a, um, a, a leadership development specialist, where I got to work with people on understanding how to have uh, more difficult conversations to have, um, you know, to manage uh, confrontation. And from all of that, I realized what helped me even more get to the root of the yes. things that were going on was these connections to their home life as well as within themselves. And I found even within my own journey, how much um, my faith and my belief in, um, and what I love is like spirituality and science actually come together. And now more than ever, do we have information that supports that? So I'm a big like, I love people who are super logic who come to see me. I'm like, okay, I'll show you the logical side of, you know, spirituality. And, and they'll, and it's my favorite is when they're like, that makes oddly weird sense. And they're like, yeah. we have, they're either atheist or, you know, um, they just don't have an understanding of what it is that they do believe. Um, and I just, I have so much fun with it. You know, like I get to teach people about, um, their past life experiences. If it, you know, comes up, I get to, you know, hear these incredible stories of what people overcome and what they're able to even create from what they've gone through. And there's nothing more beautiful. And it's an honor that I get to even, um, help people along their journeys of finding what is more, uh, connected to a peaceful experience or even just even a more joyous and loving one. And even to find the beauty in what tragedies find us in our lives. Because we can't avoid, um, even in the mainstream, right, of what goes on in the world. We are impacted by that on, um, on a grand scheme, a collective level, but also on an individual level. And um, these moments create inspiration uh, of what it is that we want to do more of with our lives. And can we look at it from that lens of honor and almost in a poetic way, right? Yeah. So, um, and there is this fear of death right now. So it's, can we make more of a um, honoring experience? Because who says that you die and, every, and nothing happens, Yeah. right? Can we leave more room for, and, and grace for that expansion in, um, trust when our time is, has come and when we're ready for this next venture, because it is an adventure. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be so doom and gloom. Of course, you know, grief or when we're ending things, it's, it just means of all the love that we have there of what we wanted to experience or what more we could have done with it. And sometimes even that we take into our next leg of experiences. So it's a good thing to have those, you know, bundles of emotion. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yeah. And we still have that three minutes left on the clock. I just want to make sure we're covering everything. What else that of importance about you and your company do you want to add? I um, love to work with people who are ready to make that shift, even if they don't know how, right? That's, that's okay. All I, all I want to know is, is that, my clients are ready to learn. They're ready to like open their minds. So if they're ready for that and as well as to expand into new possibilities of what they want to be able to experience in right. their life, yeah. 
then I'm, I'm your girl. I will be honest with you. I will, if I don't know the answers, I will refer you to other people or if other, Mm -hmm. yeah, you know, I'm your girl. I love it. Yeah. It's not about me. It's about you. And that's, and that's my, I fully want to make sure that whoever comes to me is that it's because we're getting them to experience, you know, a, a new level of joy and happiness and acceptance. So if you want to work that work out with me and not work out with me, well, you know, you can we want to do a little treadmill, you want to do a little treadmill, you know, we could do like um, some, some a reading for a while we're a, I yeah. know what you meant. You're so yeah. fun. You got such a great energy and personality Thank about you really. And, uh-huh. um, yeah, it's exciting to get to talk to you today. So yeah. if someone wants to reach out, uh, for an initial consultation, tell us how we do that, please. Yes. So you can reach out to me through odysseythroughthesea.com. I've got a direct booking link on that website, as well as I, you can reach out to me via text message, which is 954-326-7523. So I look forward to hearing from you guys. Perfect. Thank you. And don't forget social media. Uh-huh. Oh, yes, Instagram that's right. Instagram and uh, Facebook, right? Yes. Um, I don't have, I'm not too much active on Facebook, but Instagram, that's my, my Yeah, platform. your last post, you were, you were, you were walking. I remember I saw. Oh, I thing. was. <laughs> I was. I was ready. I was like. I was in the mode. I was channeling from that aspect. But um, yes, I um, Odyssey through the sea at well at Odyssey through the sea. That's my Instagram. Got handle. it. Perfect. Well, thank you for being here. Pleasure to get to see you and have a fantastic day and a great Labor Day weekend. We'll talk soon. Thank okay? you. Thank have you. Have a great one, Joe. Bye bye. Are you looking for even more of the podcasts and hosts that you love? The Podcast Business News Network is proud to announce that you now have even more ways to listen live. Check out the MyTuner Radio, Online Radio Box, and Simple Radio apps on iOS and Android, or find us online. Search for Business News Network on MyTuner-Radio.com, or search Podcast Business News Network on Streama.com and OnlineRadioBox.com slash US. Take your podcast on the go and don't miss a minute of the action. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's... It's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage free, fully adaptive, handicap accessible house, and there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit hfotusa.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's. It's going to be okay.